where really, you know, a lot of people really talking about uh, Kelly and and just kind of what he's um, doing with this song. Uh, in case you don't know, in case uh, you're not big on social media, um, R. Kelly just put up a, a song called I Admit. And in the song, he's just, it's like a coming to Jesus, like I admit, I admit, I admit, I admit, I admit. And he's kind of going through all these like what appear to be interesting revelations um, that, you know, that a lot of people are kind of surprised that he would even really talk about this and address this in a song. Um, and so I was really curious, you know, in terms of just the legal ramifications of it, you know, when you're confessing to stuff and, and talking about stuff that you did and didn't do and all that, just how that might even play out in the court of law. Uh, so to, to talk about this, I brought in my friend, attorney Nicole Compton, uh, and uh, first, Nicole, I'm going to just stop talking and just ask you, uh, did you hear the song? I listened to The Breakfast Club this morning, and at first I thought it was a spoof. <laughs> and then my day went on, I kind of forgot about it. I did not hear the whole 19 freaking minutes. I heard more like four or five minutes of it. That was all I needed to hear. The first thing that came to mind was O.J. Simpson. Ninja, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> gotten away with it all this time shut your butt up and sit down you <laughs> well you know it's kind of funny when you talk about you know confessions because um, a lot I, I, somebody else came to me this week and they were actually talking about Charlemagne and you know and asking you know if I thought that, that his mouth and the things that he's been talking about publicly are also causing him problems you know because he's I mean, most of what people are, are pulling out to kind of go after Charlemagne, too, is coming from his own mouth. You know, do you put him kind of in the same category, Nicole, in terms of just, you know, like like maybe, you know, with you being a lawyer and a legal expert, um, how do you feel when a client just feels like, okay, I got to get this off my soul. I got to talk about it. I got to get it out in the open. Like, what is your reaction when you see that kind of behavior? I double the rights. <laughs> I double the rights because at that point, you're going to have to pay to be stupid. No, I just, I guess with Charlemagne, I look at it like this. The stuff that I'm noticing, he said, was kind of before he was as big as what he is now, before as he was as known as he is. And so his stuff really does date back years and years and years. From what I read, there's nothing that, and I might be wrong, I know that the original story was when he was like 20-something, um, so it's been a while ago. I heard that there may be something that was like five years ago, but even still, he wasn't of the status that he is now. But there's at some point you have to do damage control, like shut up. Um, I remember somebody did a story on me because I, I filed bankruptcy and they were like, oh my God, she doesn't pay her bills. She filed bankruptcy. And I wanted to, you know, I did the whole I did the whole uh, interview okay, and I got to the end, and I wanted to tell my side. I remember my attorney came flying across the room like, shut the fuck so <laughs> I, You know, I'm just wondering, like, where is their counsel in this? R. Kelly, Charlemagne the God, he's pretty much said all of his stuff, you know, on, like, one-on-one -on -one interviews and, and, you know, things like that. And so he may not have had an attorney or somebody sitting right there. R. Kelly made a 19-minute song. Somebody had to produce it. Somebody had to come up with the beats. You know, I doubt that he did everything for that song and launched it on his own. At some point, when you have his kind of stature, his kind of money, dude, get you some good counsel and shut up and sit down. He, he <laughs> lost his mind. What, what are you thinking? <laughs> well, the thing that bothers me the most about all of it as a black woman, I was reading stuff like on L.A. Reid's page, and there were chicks that were like, he's still fine, though. Mm. Really? If he raped your little sister, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it was statutory, if he peed, we saw the PP tape. We saw the PP tape. <laughs> if he peed on your little sister, would you still be, he fine, though? No. Mm. Come on. We know, you know. The song did say that, and from what I read, he said that, you know, he was molested as a child. We know that when people are sexually abused as kids, that many times they end up becoming predators of children themselves. I get it. But you get help, you don't glorify it. And you darn sure don't make a 19-minute song about it. 
I think the thing that he's forgetting is that if he ever goes to trial for anything, and, you know, we don't know all the things that he's done, even though he's made his 19-minute confession, R. Kelly's, what, almost 50 now? So yeah. he's got some skeletons in the closet more than probably what we already know, stuff that's, you know, that's hush-hush and down. Um, his ex-wife came out and she said a whole bunch of stuff here recently. So there's, you know, probably more to come. If for some reason he ever gets put in a court of law, this stuff's coming out. They're going to use what he said against him. Period. Mm. Well, you know, um, by the way, we're talking about R. Kelly's new song, I Admit, and uh, the 19-minute confessional where he just kind of goes in and talks about a lot of stuff that everybody else is talking about. And I brought an attorney, Nicole Compton. Uh, she's uh, one of the attorneys that works in the Black Business School. And she um, is somebody that can help us understand just from a legal standpoint, what happens when you are self snitching, you know, basically by making songs and trying to give you a side of the story, you know, things like that. And, uh, and, and as we move on, I want to remind everybody, please hit the like button, the share button, the subscribe button, the thumbs up button. Uh, to support intellectual chocolate. We talk about what everybody's talking about it, or, or we talk about everything else everyone is talking about, but we talk about it in a way that's different from what you're hearing in mainstream media. Uh, we try to bring some intelligence to the discussion. So make sure you hit the like button, the share button, the subscribe button. And by the way, I saw the brother in here who said that he's teaching his son about uh, financial literacy thanks to me. Well, thank you for being a great parent because your child will have a great life because they have a great parent who's putting them on a great path towards success. So I want to make sure I say that to you. Now, um, now let me let me let me tell you. I, I was going through, uh, you know, some of the lyrics and I, I listened to the song. Here's the first thing that I had to uh, confess, and this this is me doing the voice. I admit, right? This is me making a confession uh, about the R. Kelly song. It was a really good song. I mean, the man is as talented, the, he, he is the Pied Piper. You know, the brother can sing his black ass off. And it doesn't matter if you like him or not. I'm, I'm not a fan of R. Kelly in terms of the stories and everything else. And I, I think that it's uh, a, an abomination, just some of the craziness that he's he's allegedly done to, these, to young women, things like that. But, you know, I think that there's an understanding that he has in his camp as well that his his voice and his talent is his power. So I think that the, the the plan was probably something orchestrated where they said, you know, hey, let's make a song about it. And people are going to be so, you know, mesmerized by the talent that they're going to forget about what lies beneath that talent. And let me tell you why I know that, Nicole, and I want to get your take on this. Years ago, I still remember this, years ago when the allegations first came out, first time, the first time people talked about him with young girls and sex tape and all that, he was supposed to be on the BET Awards. And BET stood by him. BET, actually, they didn't change anything. Everybody was taking him off the radio and all this other stuff. BET, apparently, because maybe they had money invested in him or whatever, they had him on the air to give his side of the story. Then what they did was they um, actually had him in the award show. They, they didn't just have him in the award show and give him an award. They gave him the longest set of all the performers at the whole show. And I remember being kind of appalled by that, right? But let me tell you what R. Kelly said that really got me. Uh, when they interviewed him about these original allegations, he said repeatedly, almost like somebody told him to say this, he said, just focus on my music. Just focus on my music. And I and I, I remember I said, okay, I see what they're doing. They want you to focus on the music because the music is, is so good, it lulls you to sleep. It's going to make you, especially the ladies, the ladies love a man with a great voice. There's something about it. I, when I would see all these boy bands from New Edition to NSYNC to, to uh, what's it, Mindless Behavior, and if, if boys, if men can sing, it's like it does something to women. And I think that that's where they feel like that's their ticket. Like if we just sing, if we just sing to these women, they're going to forget all about the fact that I might, I might molest your daughter in the middle of the night. What is your thought on that uh, as a woman in terms of what you see? As a Christian woman, the first thing I think when I think of that is Lucifer was the archangel of music. That was what he did. So yes, you are completely right. If I keep them mesmerized and I keep that beat going, I'm going to sew those chords. So yes, and, th and that's why I said I was really surprised that there were women that was like, he's still fine though. I still listen to it. And it's like, are you serious? We're willing to let them hang Bill Cosby, who did nothing but wholesome stuff, and 
because R. Kelly can say we're going to be like, oh, yeah, we'll just let him ride. Really? I just, I don't know. I, <laughs> I've, you know, I had a sister who was kidnapped as a teenager. I've had family members who were raped. I don't think it's anything funny about it. I mean, his music is okay, but I, you know, I used to listen to R. Kelly's music until the, when I saw the PP tape where he was peeing on the girl, I was just like, you know what? It's obvious that this is a little, it's, this is a little girl. She wasn't a, she wasn't a five-year-old, but she darn sure wasn't a 25 year old. And so ever since then, when I listened to his music, that's playing in the back of my head. When you know better, you do better. I, I don't care if he can sing his ABCs. It's not going to be a penny dropper for me. Not for me. Because mm. I'm going to be thinking about I'm going to be thinking about <laughs> thinking about this one. And it, but it's on his voice. It's not just this. It's not like this is a one time thing. You know, he had a um, a child pornography lawsuit a few years ago. The girl was like 14. Her parents didn't let her testify. She didn't testify. So essentially, he ended up being acquitted because of the crap. That didn't mean he didn't do it. That means they didn't have a witness to corroborate what the story was. That they didn't. We never got to hear from the alleged victim. You've had woman after woman after woman that is that have come forward and given you know snippets of their story. It's not the first time he was. It, it was said that there was a cult. It's just. I mean, it's something to it. And I think as a black community. I am, mark my words when I say this, I am not about throwing black men in jail or throwing the book at, you know, throwing the book at all black men. But I think at some point, we also have to look at, yeah, he's a black man and he, you know, black men are, you know, I feel like the most hated on men in the world or, you know, people in the world. But at the same time, your actions have to speak and his actions, he's got issues. <laughs> Mm. Singing or not, singing well, or not. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I think that with R. Kelly, it is, you know, I think it's clear he's got issues. Even he would agree with that. I mean, I admit he kind of admitted to everything, you know, like, I admit. you know, right, 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 to the to the type of toilet paper he uses. Like he went into detail on everything about who he is, and you know, too much. And I'm like, man, wow, I didn't even ask you about that, but that's interesting, you know. And uh, I mean, he talked about not being able to read. He talked about. Uh, you know, messing up his own money and, and not securing the rights to his music and how he's broke right now, you know, and stuff like that. And I found that to be interesting, you know, in that it, I picked up that they, at least when he made this song, that he's not in a good place. Like, I think he's just kind of like, I'm confessing that, um, that I've kind of given up maybe, or that I'm just kind of laying it all out there. Almost like people, maybe they go to church and they lay it all out for God, like, like, please forgive me. And I, and I really can't help but wonder if that's like a strategy to, number one, get people to talk about the song because radios ain't radio stations ain't playing the song. NPR was talking about the song, but they wouldn't play it, right? Because they, cause they, know, they know what we're talking about. They know that when people hear his, his talent, they're going to be distracted by that. So they're like, we don't want you to see how talented he is. We just want you to know, you know, know what we think about him as a person. But I think, um, you know, I think overall their strategy might be like we're going to remind people how talented he is uh, you know, lay out some humility and also provide some context in hopes that some people will forget. He don't need everybody to forgive him. He only needs enough people to form a base that they'll go support his music, right? And as you mentioned earlier, there are people in the black community who do not care nothing about who R. Kelly sleeps with or any of that. Well, you know what? And that, But that kind of goes back to the cult mentality. Because in order to be, to have the code, you have to have somebody that you can brainwash per se into do what I want you to do, and that's essentially like you said. That's what he's using, you know, his music to do. Do what I want you to do. I think they're also playing on the fact that nowadays you we're so used to seeing drama and things like that. They had to take it one step further past the hashtag me too. You know what I'm saying? They had to take it one step further and just shock us enough that now people want to go hear the music. You know, you hear about it, you like, Shh, I need to hear all 19 minutes of this because I got to see what everybody else is talking about. So then his ratings go through the roof 
even if you didn't buy his stuff, every time you Google his name now or listen to this song, social media and his clout in social media is going up. So then there's more money, more concert tickets that get sold because now people, you know, they want to hear it. They want to see what he's talking about. And so then he is out there. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, everybody, I'm talking to attorney Nicole Compton here on Intellectual Chocolate, and we are talking about R. Kelly's release of his new song, uh, I Admit. Uh, in this song, R. Kelly seems to go into a lot of interesting stuff. And so uh, I'm going to pull up some of the lyrics, uh, Nicole, and, and kind of go through into different sections of what – what he discusses and, and kind of get your, your take on this. By the way, everybody who's watching, uh, first of all, I want you to know if you I see some people on Instagram and Facebook, you're, you're saying wonderful things and giving wonderful comments, compliments. And I want to say thank you for that. I, I do see that. I just, uh, I'm trying to stay focused here, but, uh, but, but, but I love you too. I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, but, but let me go through. So he talks, so they go through, actually this article on twofab.com, they kind of break down some of the must hear lyrics. Um, they talk about, uh, he talks about cheating on his wife. Uh, which honestly, in the R. Kelly spectrum of of behavior, cheating is probably like one of the least, uh, you know, concerning things that he's done. I, I don't think I honestly don't think it's my business uh, to worry about whether another man has an affair or not. Uh, he does talk about being abused. He says, "Now I admit, a family member touched me uh, from a child to the age 14, while I laid asleep, took my virginity. So scared to say something, so I just put the blame on me." Now he said a family member uh, lost his virginity uh, from a child. How does that make you feel? Does that make you feel? Now he says it's a female blood relative um, who molested him between the ages of seven to fourteen. Does that give you any empathy for R. Kelly, or what? 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 What do you say to that? Woo. No, <laughs> I, I guess no, because like I said, most times perpetrators of child sexual abuse have been sexually abused themselves. However, that's not an excuse. At some point, you got to get help. At some point, you, you go to therapy and you get help or you acknowledge that you have the issue. I think one of the reasons, one of the ways that he's been able to hide it is that he learned quickly to start getting 16 and 17 year olds so places like Illinois and Georgia, you know, where he's he's had women where they said that they're captive, um, he can say, well, at least they can consent or they're close enough to legal age of consent that, you know, when welfare checks are done, they can say, no, we're not being harmed and, and stay under his rule. But still, a 14, 15, 16, 17 year old girl, I mean, you're you're basically doing the same thing to somebody else that was done to you. No, it doesn't make it right. If somebody, you know, somebody punches you in the eye, it doesn't give you the right to turn around and punch somebody else in the eye. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have that much empathy that I'm going to overlook it. Well, you know, well, I'll say that I, it doesn't give me any empathy at all um, in the sense that for what you just said, right? I mean, if we let every person who does something horrible – explain away their crime by saying, well, somebody did something horrible to me. I mean, then you, you might as well just let everybody out of jail right now. You know, because most people that go to prison, you know, that they, they kill somebody, molest somebody, something happened to them when they were a child. And I, and I, I, I think it's worth talking about, right? I think that more, more incarcerated people need therapy. We don't give them therapy. We just want to punish them, which makes, makes things worse for society. But, but really, most molesters, most killers, most whatever, they got a story, you know what I mean? And, uh, and it's sad, but, but you still are like, well, I'm sorry that you went through that, but we still got to punish you, right? right? Legally, legally, it is not a legal defense. It's not a legal defense to say, yes, I perpetrated these crimes, but it was done to me. You know, yeah, well, you know, maybe he lived in a state where there is no statute of limitations and he can go after that family member if he so chooses. However, that would not ever get him acquitted if he was charged with doing it to someone else. Mm, interesting. Well, you know, um, another interesting thing that Kelly did bring up in his song, uh, he, he brought up the fact that he basically he says, um, I, I F with all the ladies that's both older and younger, but tell me how they call it pedophile because that's, that's crazy. And then he says, um, 
I admit, now pay attention, this is interesting. He talks about the parents of these young of these young women. And he says, I admit that this is no disrespect to the parents, but of course you're about to disrespect them when you say no disrespect. Right? <laughs> he says, but this is my advice to you, because I'm also a parent. Don't push your daughter in my face and tell me it's okay because your agenda is to get paid and get mad when it don't go your way. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think that's, the, I remember being younger thinking about Aaliyah when she married him and thinking, you know, I liked her parents. I liked her brother. It was like, y'all, nobody thought that there was an issue with that then. And I always wondered if there was a payoff with her parents. You know, what was going on that you would let this beautiful young lady marry this older guy who is known for what he's known for? Because back then he still was doing all his sexual music and things like that. Um, so I agree. I mean, I look at it, the one I was telling you about where he was charged and acquitted of the child pornography, it was because the 14-year-old's parents didn't go forward. So it makes you wonder, one, how did the 14-year-old end up with him? Two, why did not the parents or the girl ever come forward to testify at that trial? How many dollars were thrown at him? Mm. But then I also look at, hey, look at, I always joke around. I, I always joke around when people say, your president. Look at your president. Number 45 ain't much better of an example. That might be why R. Kelly decided he wanted to say what he wanted to say. I mean, look at who's top down, top down. Look, who, yeah. look who's on top. I think that is 100% true. I mean, uh, even Bill Clinton, actually, you know, there's a lot of disturbing allegations about him. Um, and I think that what it's interesting, what is interesting about it is that, you know, I think we don't have a clear agreed upon understanding in terms of the scope of, of sexuality and what's, what's okay, what's not. Um, and I say that because, um, you know, when I, when I look at R. Kelly, I've never been you know, I, from the moment that the, the stuff came out about the little girl, um, that was where I drew the line. That was where I was like, you, you're not supposed to do that. You know, you're not supposed to, uh, you know, date a, or be with a girl that's under the age of 18. But here's what happens in the black community. And it's happening every day. It's happening right now in your community, mine, everywhere else, especially on the south side of Chicago. Um, how often do you see, like go around and look at, if you look at Chicago, for example, this is uh, Detroit, same thing, every major city. There's a lot of these 15, 16 year old pregnant girls. Hold right? on, my boy. Right, right, right. No, 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 no. I'm not making fun of it. Oh, right, right. Well, you were, yeah, you had a baby at 15. Oh, right. 15 year old pregnant girl. Hold on now. No, 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 no. I'm not making fun of them. My mama, my mama was a 16 year old pregnant girl, right? It happens. It happens everywhere. But my point in all this is to say, how often is it that this 15, 16 year old pregnant girl was impregnated? by a 22, 23, 24, 25, 28, 29 year old man, right? And, and, and the question becomes, right? If, if all those situations, um, you know, technically, legally, that's, it's all rape, right? It's all statutory rape. But in terms of consent, in many cases, uh, you know, it was two people who agreed to get together and have sex, well, you know? So, so, so how do we kind of analyze that as a community mixing law with, what happens naturally versus, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where we, how we even process this. You know, the sad part about it is right now I'm in South Florida. Florida just had in their last legislative session where they were trying to pass a law regarding um, marrying underage girls. Because what was happening was you were having grown men who were impregnating or who wanted to marry these young girls and their parents were signing off on it. And they didn't care, you know, 11, 12 year old, they were getting married to grown men. And so they finally were like, hold on, we have to put a stop. But there are so many states out of the 50 states, there were so many states who were like, we don't want that. We want to be able to say who our daughters can marry and when they can marry. That ends up being a problem. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, as a former teen mom, I don't know what's worse. Uh, my parents didn't force me or even want me to marry my son's father. And so, but I had some people who were like, oh, you did it. And then you're going to make my daughter an honest woman and 
<laughs> you know, you're going you gonna to take care of her. And so I had some friends who did get married off to, like, grown men. Of course, it didn't was, work. Was your, was your son's father, how old was he? Was he also 15 or was he? No, um, I was 15. He was 17 before our son was born or right after our son was born, he turned 18. Mm. Yeah, my mother was 16, and I think my father was actually 15. And see, here's the thing. There's no federal law on it. Each state can do what they want. So like Illinois, like I said, I think Illinois, the age of consent is 17. I think Georgia, the age of consent is 16. I know that in Kentucky, um, technically the age of consent um, is 18. However, there is some leeway between 16 and 18 where they won't prosecute. It's hard to push to get them to prosecute or to do anything. So what happens in many of the states is, is you get a 14 or 15 year old, if she gets pregnant or if she's caught having sex with a man who's over the age of 18 or 21, they kind of, eh, you know, they look at, was he under, was he between 18 and 21? They're really probably not going to do anything. If they're 21 and up, you know, but the girl is 16 or 17, they may not. So then you have the laws that are actually there and the prosecutors who are so overwhelmed that they're not going to enforce. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, everybody, I'm talking to attorney Nicole Compton. We're talking about R. Kelly. Uh, in case you just came in, R. Kelly just released a song called I Admit, where he talks about uh, everything. <laughs> and uh, it's a long song. It's 19 minutes. My God. And, and, and let me let me, let me me tell you this, uh, Nicole. But, but, so make sure you hit the like button, share button, subscribe button, thumbs up button, all that stuff. And also don't forget, um, uh, Attorney Nicole Compton is one of the people I'm inviting inviting to the All Black National Convention, which is happening uh, September the weekend of September 27th in Philadelphia. Uh, you can learn more if you want to come to the convention. We're going to show The Melanin Code, which is a great movie. You've probably seen the previews. We're also going to uh, have um, networking sessions and meetings between black people that want to actually build and create things and do business together, all that stuff. So if you want to know, if you want to come out and hang out, it's a lot of fun. It's like a big family reunion. Go to allblacknationalconvention.com. That's allblacknationalconvention.com. I will be there, and I will be handing out thousands of hugs big hugs. I will be handing out thousands of big bear hugs. So if you want to be a bear hug, come to the All Black National Convention and I got you. So um, let me, uh, let, let me, let me mention this, uh, Nicole. So, you know, so you're talking about, you know, the, the R. Kelly thing. And I think that the interesting thing, the reason I brought up the whole thing with the parents and his deals with the parents and, and even with Aaliyah, from what I understand, her parents did not have a problem with that relationship. Um, is that, you know, I think that my, my theory on this is that, you know, if you consider the R. Kelly's of the world to be a problem for the black community, because he ain't the only one, you got, you got, a, you got a lot of people doing this kind of thing. Um, I would be willing to argue that it's because we don't have fathers in the black community like we used to, that these men are allowed to do what they want. It's like the, the fox getting into the chicken coop because the dog ain't guarding the, the chicken coop, right? Because here's what happens. I, I knew a teacher there was a teacher I knew who was teaching young ladies in, in a high school in South Side Chicago. And when the allegations came out about R. Kelly and the sex tape and the 15 year old girl, the teacher brought it up in class and she didn't judge. She didn't, ask, she didn't say this is bad. She just wanted to see how they really felt. So she said to the girls, well, did you hear about the R. Kelly tape? They said, Oh yeah. Cause everybody knows R. Kelly is Chicago. And she said, so what do y'all think about that? And the girls didn't, you know, it took a while, but they were honest eventually in terms of how they felt. And she said that some of the girls were like, I would fuck them. I would fuck them. Right? Yeah, that yeah, I know, I'm know i cussing, but that's what they said. Yeah. And she said, you know, so. That's the criteria of what he has that will make all of these people want to, want to check him out. But the thing about it is that, you know, R. Kelly is an interesting paradox, I think, for people because he has these disturbing characteristics. But for women, you know, he's a handsome man. He sings really well. He's got a lot of wealth, you know, things like that. And I think that there are some people, especially young girls, young girls can't distinguish that. You know, they will literally, I remember talking to some teenage girls who told me they would love to date and marry and sleep with little Wayne. And I was like, do you know this man got three girls pregnant at once? Do you, how many diseases do you want to catch today? But they didn't care. They were just like, oh, I'd marry him. And I said, well, do you think he would be faithful to you? And the girl said, yeah, I think he would. I think that if I, if, if he really loved me, he would. I'm like, you got a lot to learn about men. They, they're, 
you know, you know, so so it's it was kind of like it's kind of like what, really what the fathers do. This is my my advocacy for fa black fathers. Everybody want to act like black fathers are bad, but that's what white people want. White folks don't want the fathers in your household. I want I want fathers there because what fathers do is they keep their daughters from doing stupid stuff. They, you know, their daughters would be 16, like, oh, I'm in love, and I want to be with him, and, and Kelly treats me right. Your daddy can see right through it, just like your mama, you know, can see through right through that hoochie, you know, who that you bought home, and we'll be like, no, this young lady will not be allowed in my house. And you're like, no, but mama, she loves me. And the mother's like, no, I know women like that. Well, fathers are the same way. Fathers can look at guys and be like, no, your intentions with my daughter are not, are not genuine. I do not want you touching my child. And if you do that, if you come near her, I will probably have to kill you or I will break both of your legs. That's what you really need. And when you don't have that protection, then an R. Kelly comes in, he sweet talks the mama, maybe put some money on the, on the dinner table because, you know, the family's struggling and, and gains their trust. Next thing you know, these, these parents are signing their child off to this man. You know, I think that that's happened. I really think that, it, again, R. Kelly deserves a lot of what he's getting. Ain't, you can't let him off the hook for nothing. But you can't tell me that there are not some parents who have been complicit in selling their kids to this man. You can't tell Ethan me that Turner. is happening. Say Tina again? Turner and Ike. You saw the movie. Tina Turner's mama was like, oh, he's a good man. He got money. And the whole time he's paying her off. And he beat the spirit out of Tina and taking everything from her. It's not. There's nothing new under the sun. And I agree. The father is the, the, the stopgap for that. You know, most of my practice was father's rights. It didn't, I didn't intend it to be that way. But what I realized is there were so many dads that were like, you know, and I will admit as a black woman, I cannot raise a black man. I can raise a good person. I can tell him what I think a man should be. I can't raise a black man. And it's the same thing with little girls. I'm a daddy's girl. My daddy, you know, in a heartbeat would tell you, I played that trick, that trick. That... I had a, a, a talk with a guy yesterday and we were talking about his daughter and his daughter's mad at him because he's like, every time he get a chance, put that ninja on the phone. Let me talk to him. And the guy's scared because he know he don't mean his daughter. It, he doesn't mean his daughter right. A guy's going to step in. But the thing is, even if the father's not in the home, there should be the big brother. There should be the, the surrogate father. There should be the teacher at school, the pastor. Somebody needs to be there to be like, hold on. Our daughters, our young women are, are worth so much more. Those are our queens. And, and to have the guys that are there to also not just deal with the daughters who want the R. Kelly's, but the ones that go to the R. Kelly's be like, yo, man, don't call her that. Don't be there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I agree. I wanted to say this. I was reading the article and I was reading a article, I think on BuzzFeed, and they were talking about how R. Kelly had his inner circle. And so some of the inner circle people had came out and said, this is what's going on. And so um, and I know y'all heard about the story a while ago when um, a chick's mom kept calling the police and they were doing wellness, you know, well checks, welfare checks on the house that the daughter was with, with R. Kelly. And they kept saying, nope, you can come in and see, everything's fine. She's not being held against her will. And then later, you know, there was talk about how people were being like, like held against their will and, and um, the wool poured over their eyes. One of the chicks, um, Asante McGee, basically said, and I'm quoting her, R. Kelly is the sweetest person you'll ever meet. But R. Kelly, but Robert is the devil. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> how do you be both? But I think, you know, for a young girl to have a guy show her attention, especially when her hormones are raging, it doesn't even have to be a young girl because I know there are silly women. But to have someone who is naive, to have a guy juice them up, you're the prettiest one. I, yeah, I might got three or four baby mamas, but I never do that to you because what you got right there, girl, I need that. You know, and then you put a little music to it. It's hard for the girls to be able to see through and be like, oh, he said it to everybody. <laughs> he might be physically and verbally abusive later, you know, but mm -hmm. he, he he loves me. Wow. Well, you know, I, yeah, I think that that attention factor is huge, you know, especially when you're talking about, um, you know, I, I'm a believer that, you know, when you talk about inalienable rights and things that every human being has a right to, 
like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I believe every girl has the right to have at least one man in her life from an early age who is not trying to have sex with her, who cares about her, who would fight for her, protect her, and die for her, who isn't trying to sleep with her. And I think that what happens is a lot of women get confused when that a father isn't there. They meet that first man who pretends to be the protector, pretends to be the provider, and gives the attention, the compliments, whatever, and he has an agenda at the back of that, right? And it might even be the pastor, it might be the school teacher, it might be the you know the basketball coach. And I, and I think that that's really what the fund, fundamental problem is. That's that's how the R. Kellys uh, of the world are are allowed to kind of do their thing and roam through the hood, you know, drive up to the middle school and 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 have little girls literally coming at him and saying, no, this ain't no molestation. I want you. I want what's in your pants. I know what to do with it. Uh, you know, in, in fact, I heard an older woman talking about that tape. I did not watch that tape because I did not want to be in possession of that tape because that is possession of child pornography. And I was like, I don't want to touch it, you know, but 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 I do know people saw it. It was what it was. But one lady who saw it, she said to me, she said, I saw that little girl and she said I needed to talk to her and get some notes because apparently she learned some tricks that I still have to learn. And I'm 40. You know, and so so you got, you know, some little girls. They're no different from, you know, a lot of times they're no different from where, the way we were as little boys. When we were little boys, we had school teachers where we were like, yes, I would love it if Miss Smith tried to uh, violate me. <laughs> that would be, that would make my day, right? I would be the luckiest son of a bitch in the entire school. And so I, I can't imagine there aren't girls who think that that's what they want. And But the reason we as parents step in between that and we, we cock block, so to speak, we block that process is because when you're young, you think you're ready for love, but you ain't really ready for that. You're not ready for all those emotions. You're not ready for the consequences. You're not ready for the outcomes, the deception that can occur when somebody's older than you and they may have intentions that differ from yours. So that's why you protect it. But we can't act like it's like, you know, as, as simple as people make it out to be, you know. But one thing I want to ask you about, too, uh, Nicole, I want to get your take on this. When, when it comes to what R. Kelly is accused of doing with the young girls underage, um, I've always been very clear, like, you know, that's not cool. You can't do that. Um, what I wasn't so sure about was when they had the later accusations, when they said that he allegedly had this cult where all the girls were over eight, all the women were, you know, above 18, but he was holding them against their will. But then they would ask them, is he holding you against your will? And the lady would be like, no. <laughs> so if you live in a world where you believe that what a woman says is what she really wants, you respect what she, you know, you, you don't think, like if I was a sexist, I would say, yeah, a woman might say yes, but she really means no. She might say she doesn't want to be there, but she really does. She might say, you know, like, like it, it, to me, that's a sexist mindset. My mindset is if she says she wants to be there, and there's nobody stopping her from getting up and walking out that door. It's hard for me to say that you're still, you're victimizing her because it, in order for me to believe that, I have to believe that women's minds are so weak that a man can just do some sort of magical mind control and make them do things, which which undercuts the idea of men and women being equal. What do you think about that? Wow, that's a mouthful. There was one of the ladies, I think her name was Kitty Jane, that said, she was one of R. Kelly's inner circle too. And she basically said, I got trapped. Everybody was trying to tell me I was an idiot, what he was trying to do for the longest time. I, you know, I didn't realize that they were right, but now I realize they're right, you know, and I hope that me coming forward will help somebody else. What happens is when you have one, when they're closed off, and the only person that they are seeing is him and the couple of people who are also brainwashed, that he's brainwashed, then all you're talking to, you know, you're talking to basically your captor. And it is normal for people to start um, looking at their captor as someone they love or someone who cares for them. And so, I mean, there's been all kinds of psychological studies on you know, Stockholm Syndrome and things like that. And so I think that it can happen to not just women. We, I mean, for all we know, there could also be, you know, we haven't heard about it, but there may also be little boys that he's doing this to, you know, that, that just haven't come out because we're focusing on the females. I don't think it's necessarily a, a, um, a matter of not believing a woman or believing a woman. 
So, but, well, but then, then, so that, does that mean that if a woman if a woman tells me I'm in a relationship with him because I want to be here, that I shouldn't believe her, that I should say, no, 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 you really don't want to be in that relationship because he's really con he's brainwashed you and he's controlling your mind. I mean, what I'm saying is that it would be hard for me. Let's say I went to divorce court and uh, and, and my wife uh, was going to get half of my assets. And let's say that I said, you know what, Your Honor, um, I, I this woman manipulated my mind. I was, you know, I thought she loved me, but really she brainwashed me. Uh, the sex was so good. She was giving me that good loving, and it was so good that I signed, that I agreed not to sign the prenup because she manipulated me with her vagina and got me to do something that I wouldn't normally do. I would look crazy. I would look, you know, like people would be like, man, no, you agree, you agreed to not create a prenup, so you got to deal with the consequences of that, right? So, so you, if you can just understand, you know, for me as a man, it's hard for me to process the idea that a man could sweet talk so well or whatever it is, whatever he's, if he's not holding you against your will and he's, and you can walk out that door anytime you want that he can manipulate you so much that you do something and you're telling everybody, this is what you want to do. And we're supposed to believe you, right? Because hey, most of the women who were saying we are okay, we want to be here. They are only like they're closed off from the outside world. The only person, the only people that they were talking to was that inner circle, was all the people that are constantly every day, you're supposed to be here, you want to be here, you know, and him. So, yes, you can be manipulated and brainwashed. Well, it's I'll say that like prostitutes that don't leave their pimps. I, I understand. I mean, I agree with it. I, I, could, I understand what you mean, right? What I and this is where where it's it's tough for me to balance, and especially in the age of Me Too, because in the age of Me Too in feminism, we're told men and women are the same, women are as strong as men, women can do anything a man can do. So if you believe that, which I do want to believe that we that we're able to overcome things in the same capacity, it's hard for me to then say, oh, but wait a minute, because I can say this. Look, if I'm in a situation, if I'm in a situation where somebody's holding me. And they're not forcing me to stay. And somebody says, do you want to be here? I'm going to be like, hell no, I'm leaving. If the door's open, I'm going to walk out. I'm not going to like sit there and say, no, I really want to be here. But then I can later on come back and say, well, I was cut off from the outside world. Nobody was talking to me. And when the reporter opened the door and said, you can leave, I didn't understand that because I had Stockholm syndrome. You, you follow what I'm saying? We also don't know. One of the things that I, as an attorney, that I'm curious to see is some of the agreements and the settlements that have been had in these cases we also don't know what the non-disclosure agreements say we don't know what contracts with settlements things like that were going on in the background he could have been like trick you leave i'm gonna take that hundred thousand i just gave your mama last week you know what i'm saying you tell them you want to go i got you by a string go ahead tell them we don't know that i am very curious because i've looked at the lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, you know, civil and criminal with R. Kelly. And it seems like he walks away from everything. But like I said before, in some of his lawsuits, you have where reporter don't want to talk, mom don't want to talk, the kid don't want to talk, you know, things like that. And then they won't disclose and they won't say if there was a settlement, what the settlement was for, if there was a non-disclosure agreement, if there were any other kind of agreement. So I'm curious to know because it might not just be something like Stockholm Syndrome. It might be you leave me, your mama gonna owe me that 500,000 I just gave her, you know, or I'm gonna take away this, this or that, or you gonna go back to the crappy life and home that you had, or you can stay here, continue to be part of my coat and drink my Kool-Aid, well, wouldn't it be within a man or, or woman's rights? Like if a woman, let's let's flip the gender. So I, because I don't want to get into like a conversation that could sound sexist, but right. let's say I, let's say I was hollering at Oprah, and Oprah's like, Doctor Boyce, I need you to be my boy toy, and I'm like, okay, you, you know, boy toy. What do you say? You wouldn't be Oprah's boy toy. I would not. I would not. That's another difference between men and women. When I was a young guy, you couldn't have paid me enough money to, to sleep with Oprah. That'd be like sleeping with my mama. Like, I couldn't do it. But let's say, theoretically, that was to happen, right? So uh, let's say Oprah said, boys, you, you become my boy toy. And I know this This is a real story. I knew a guy who got approached by a pro very prominent black female celebrity. 
he was a young guy about 15 years younger than her. He, she was a cougar. She had money he didn't. She was like, I'll, I'll take care of you. You'll be in my mansion. We'll, we'll be riding in limos, going around the world. Your bills will be paid. All you got to do is make mama smile, you know, every morning, right? That's what the deal was. So, you know, I think he was thinking about doing it. I don't think he did it. But let's say that he did it. Let's say, you know, so he goes off and becomes this woman's boy toy. And that's the deal. That's the agreement between two consenting adults. Like, I'm a, you know, I'm a tickle big mama's big toe every morning. Whatever I got to do, she's going to make sure I'm took care of financially. So let's say that one day he says, this is exploitative. This is you, you, you brainwashed me. You corrupted me. I've got, you know, you, I've been affected mentally. You fool, you tricked me into this. And he walks away. He says, I'm not doing this no more. And she, so what, it, so then she says, okay, well, you know, that means you ain't going to have access to the mansion no more. You ain't going to have the Bentley. You ain't going to have the money in your bank account. And I'm not flying you around the world. Is there something wrong with that? What is wrong? I'm not even defending R. Kelly. I don't, I don't want to take him out of the equation. What I'm saying is that it's, it, it would seem to me that if there was an understanding between R. Kelly and some 20-year-old woman where, you know, look, it, I, I will pay all these bills if you come with me and do these things sexually, and then the, the sex stops, and so the money stops, I would just expect that to be something that would naturally occur. Like, I, I couldn't imagine, you know, somebody hiring me to be her boy toy, and then I say, no, this is wrong. I'm not doing this anymore. And then for me to walk away thinking, but you're still supposed to pay me as if I was. No, I didn't. I, I'm not upholding my end of the agreement. Am I right? And there's nothing illegal about two adults who agree to trade. Uh, well, maybe there kind of is, right? Like, because prostitution is no, supposed to be. But, but you know how it, prostitution happens all the time. People out there, seriously, when a man, I'm going to tell you like this, Nicole, just being real. When I got money, when I had more money, I never became more handsome in my life than when I had money. That If you ever want to try, if women, well, women are amazing. Y'all can look past a guy's looks, his height, everything else. Y'all think he got money, a lot of women suddenly think that guy's handsome. So, so that stuff happens all the time. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm gonna let you talk. Wait, say it again. No, but I mean, <laughs> oh, you, you technically you should not have an agreement like that. However, we know that they exist, and it's just a, it's a matter of how it was written and what state it was written in. Um, you can't go against the woman if the woman is saying. That's, you know, there's been, t not just R. Kelly, but there's been tons and tons of cults out there. You know, and like I said, the prostitute and the, and the pimp relationship, where you have parents that fly halfway across the United States trying to save their daughter from that relationship or that arrangement, and the daughter's like, I'm not going, I'm going with my pimp. You know, and, it, and we don't, it doesn't make sense from the outside, but you cannot force an adult. My problem is, you're my grandbaby. <laughs> <laughs> my is not the adult situation as much as it is the younger women that is happening to with him. Because once you 18, 19, okay, maybe that's her journey. Maybe that's what she needs to go through. You know, I would hope that she would have, you know, family and friends that would try to talk some sense into her. But, you know, I had family members that were in abusive relationships. They were getting a snot beat out of them. And we were like, oh, my God, you got to take him to court. You got to do this. You got to do that. And they were like, no, but I love him. And it took, you know, that one last beat down to thank God they didn't die before they were like, oh, I might need to leave him. <laughs> he might okay. not mean me any good. I, you know, two black eyes later and a broken nose, I probably should leave Boo alone. But, you, you know, we can't make them go. My mm -hmm. whole thing, too that I wanted to hit on, on the whole R. Kelly thing. So he made this song. To me, it's not, you know, like I said, we don't know what other allegations and what other lawsuits can come out with R. Kelly. With O.J. Simpson, that was the first thing I thought about. Because, you know, O.J. wrote the book, If I Had Done It. And then he did interviews and said, well, if I did it, I would do this. I would. And then he started talking in the first person. And then he started talking real. And he was like, ha, ha, ha. But I'm just saying, if I did it, no, 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 uh-uh, we know. But <laughs> so that's what made me think about it. The difference between him and R. Kelly is his stuff was over. So at that point, Double Jeopardy had attached. 
in double jeopardy, they can't charge you again. They can't retrial you for something that you were already acquitted of. And can they treat you like crap and put you in jail for still for taking your own memorabilia that was stolen? Yes, they can, and they did. R. Kelly, on the other hand, we don't know what else is to come. We don't know if he if any of the things that um, that he's done are the things that he will do in the future that end up going to court. They're not going to be able to keep this song out. You know, we hear in the you know you watch TV. And you always hear the attorney say, objection, your honor, objection. You know, and the, 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 the judge is like, what? Hearsay. You know, hearsay is an out-of-court statement, um, an out-of-court statement that is made to prove, or that's made in court or brought into court to prove the truth of a matter asserted. So basically, in other words, it's somebody else's statement or somebody that has witnessed you saying something and basically said, well, he, I heard so-and-so said that this happened or so-and-so said, so-and-so said that this happened. Those things are, hearsay is usually kept out. However, there are exceptions to hearsay. One of the exceptions to hearsay is a statement or a declaration by a party against their own interest. This whole song is 19 minutes of a declaration or an admission by a party, being R. Kelly, against himself. So if two years, three years, five years down the road, he's charged with something, you know, or he's, or he's um, sued civilly, this comes in. It's no longer hearsay. It's an exception to the rule. And so then he's already said, I admit it. The name of the song is I admit it. How are you gonna keep that out? as inadmissible evidence. I admit it. Mm -hmm. I admit this. I admit that. I admit this. And he gets close enough on that line that you're like, oh, that ninja did it. <laughs> well, you know, did it. Well, well, you know, but, but, I didn't but, not hear it. I'm cringing. Well, what's funny, you know, Nicole, is that, that I was looking at the song and kind of looking at the lyrics. It doesn't seem like he really name specific people in you know when R. Kelly put this song out or he's naming specific incidences. I, I don't recall that. Uh, it's almost like he talks in generality. You know, now he did say that he had sex with his girlfriend's best friend. Um uh, yeah, I mean just you know, I can look at the lyrics. I made some mistakes. I have some imperfect ways. So he's admitting admitting the imperfections. It's almost like he was trying to gain sympathy from the audience by talking about what he's gone through, admitting that you know that he's not perfect, things like that. And black people are very forgiving. So I, I think that that's part of their strategy. Um, and he talks about the emotional effect he feels in terms of, I guess, being misrepresented, misunderstood. Yeah. Um, now, he does go into uh, this interesting comparison that I think is, is, is worth sort of hearing what people think on this. But, you know, when it comes to the young women who are not underage, um, he actually asked the question that I, I've heard other people ask, which is, what, what's the difference between him having a bunch of young women in the house versus Hugh Hefter? Hugh Hefter, for 70 years, lived with, you know, 20-year-olds all through his house. Uh, R. Kelly, you know, he's saying, look, I just did what Hugh Hefter did, and Hugh Hefter is loved and admired by everybody. What do you think is the difference between uh, our, I mean, just, I'm talking about the, old, the, the of age women, not, not the ones, I'm talking about the cold situation, not the underage stuff. That's a different category. But what do you think is different between him and Hugh Hefner in that regard? The only difference is he's a black man in America. And mm. that stands out. Um, mm. They both have built their legacy. Speak up just a little bit. For some reason, I can't hear you so well. I said they, they both have um, built their legacies on sex and sex sales. So really, in all true honesty, there, there probably isn't anything between the two. Um, however, the, you know, the playmates, for the most part, did have contracts and they were getting paid. But I'm sure that there were women that wished they were playmates and were trying to get to be playmates that, you know, showed up and tried to stay and, and you know, entertained at parties. Um, so I guess that would be the, the only two differences is the contracts and um, the contracts and the fact that you have a black man versus a white man. Mm. Well, you know, I think that that says a lot. And I, I'm actually going to come back tomorrow and talk a little bit about R. Kelly on my way. I'm about to take a trip across the country to uh, going to Seattle. 
uh, I'm gonna run a half marathon up there, I think. And uh, but um, I think on the way there'll be more to talk about because he actually covers a lot more in terms of um, why he's broke. Like he confesses to being broke. He says it's because he didn't he didn't own his music. He didn't you know he was too, he he was illiterate. Uh, things like that. And these are the things I talk about all the time. You know, for for our children, you got to make sure your kids are educated. You got to make sure your kids understand business. Because here, this man, I ain't gonna lie. Toward the end, I was like, wow. Is this guy gonna kill himself? You know what's going on? You know because he was basically saying, "I'm done. I'm broke. Like you know, I'm doing concerts. I can't make any money doing concerts now. You know things like that." And a lot of it is because when things were going well, when he had plenty of opportunity, plenty of money, um, he, he didn't quite really know what to do with that. Say it again. He was paying people off to keep their mouth shut. He was paying people off, right, right, right. And then also he was doing—he was borrowing money from the record label. You know, he mentioned borrowing a couple million dollars from the label. A lot of these artists, you know, they get the record deal and they get money from the label. They don't know that that's actually a loan. So ultimately, I think for black people, we've got to understand that. Like, I think at the very least, you know, whether you still going to try to rock with R. Kelly or not, I never really did anyway. And I, so I'm not going to really rock with him, you know, in terms of music. That's more for the dysfunctional crazy women who can look past all of that like and seriously that's what it is really it's, it's those women who are so enamored with his voice and his looks that they just don't care and they you know they're like here you got my daughter i i don't know what these people are thinking but but at the same time i think you can learn from him like you can learn from uh you know just the effects of what he went through the bad choices he made etc and here this man is sounding like he might be dead in a couple months you know what i Part of me feels like that he's playing the victim right now. That he's playing the victim because it's going to get him the publicity to make more money. So, you know, yes, he may really have issues. But when I look at it, I see him as playing the victim. I, the one thing I can say with all sincerity that I think is a big problem for him is whether you are rich and famous or you are every day on the street the everyday regular person you got to have good people around you the fact that he's going through this that he's been through this that he's doing the things that he's done if nothing else he has no good legal counsel and most people say you know i don't want an attorney i don't need an attorney i'm not going i'm never going to get in trouble no you get an attorney and you get good legal counsel so that you don't have to worry about getting in trouble so that they form that head that legal hedge around you so that you're not paying out money that you shouldn't have to pay out. You're not making the songs admitting to stuff and talking about stuff that's not going to help you legally. And so that you don't have to do all of these settlements and cleanups later. And so I can say that he really does not have good people around him. And that's sad. You know, if he can skate by and not read and he can go through what he went through and not get therapy for it and, you know, all of this crazy stuff. Where are the people in his circle that are supposed to be looking out for him? Mm. Well, you know, I agree with you 100 percent. And somebody right here just says, I agree with you. They said um, R. Kelly's not the only celebrity doing what he's done. And that's true. There's a whole lot of pedophiles in Hollywood. Hollywood. I mean, I'm talking about famous directors, white people that are doing crazy stuff with children. And um, and I would just say, you know, look, if you're going to go after R. Kelly or uh, go after him. But after that, go after some of these white people, too. You know, I, I, I think what what gives him legs and any sympathy is he can legitimately say because he's a black man you know people are looking at it differently but that does not let him off the hook for his own behavior because we got to protect our girls so uh so i want to say thank you very much to attorney nicole compton thank you for uh it, you know joining me in this conversation uh and thank you everybody who's watching um uh, make sure you hit the like button share button subscribe button and follow Nicole. Where can you where can they follow Nicole besides flynewbeingqueen.com? Where else can they follow you? My hashtags are um, and my name Nicole has an H in it. Um, Nicole says so or hashtag that's law folks. So okay. those two are my hashtags, or just hashtag Nicole Compton. Um, I wanted to say this when you talk about it tomorrow, boys, talk about whether it would matter if R. Kelly did this to black girls. And women versus Becky. That's oh. what I want to know. Because oh, well that, I, I can it. answer that in five seconds. If he did it to Becky, he'd be dead. He'd be. They would have gave his ass the death penalty years ago. We know how white people are. If R. Kelly had sex with a dog, 
white people would have got him before they get him for, for, for what he did to black people. That's just real. White people love their dogs more than they love their black people. The evidence is everywhere. So that that's done. That's an easy conversation. But I think you should talk about this tomorrow on Fly New Being Queen, and I'll, I'll tell everybody to tune in. Uh, everybody, make sure you hit the like button, share button, subscribe button. Also, make sure you don't forget uh, allblacknationalconvention.com. The all